This program is proudly sponsored by DT's Hotel, where every colour of the rainbow drinks, corner of Hyatt and Church Streets, Richmond. There's nobody better. Better than you. You make me feel happy. Ah, happy to know. Is that Paul? Yeah. Where is the feeling? The feeling of security. When we're not together. So we everything. Oh! Yeehaw! There you go! Yay. Oh, thank you, that's very good. And welcome to that time of the week again. Yes, it's Squeal here on Bent TV, which is part of the Channel 31 group, which of course is your community station. Now we have been joined this week. We'll get right into it and introduce the fabulous Corinne Day. Hi, Corinne. Yay. Yay. Those of you that were watching over the last few weeks, Corinne has um, had a bit of resurgence back up on the stage <laughs> just recently. Yeah, more yeah. like a burst on. <laughs> and it's been fun? Yeah, it was fun. Excellent. It was fun. Yeah, it was get, good, to, yes. get up and see the girls and tread the boards again. Mm -hmm. um, let's introduce the rest of the squealers and we'll start with the news desk. We have Jude, Jude from Lesbiana. Jude. Sorry, I was going to try and get your last name out then and it got stuck on my tongue so I'm sorry about that. Welcome Jude. Thank you. And we'll talk to you a little bit more in the wild Peter. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm well. Oh, Your disco needs you. Your disco needs you. Peter. And we're a bit thorny between a rose. We are. We? We? It's the fabulous Miss Vic. Yay. Hi Vic. How are you doing? Thanks for coming along today. <laughs> and Troy Thanks down on the end looking colourless today. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and of course, our special guest today is Kylie, but we'll see her a little bit later. And then she's looking a bit flat, but anyway. Um, okay, we are going to talk to Corinne first off, cab off the rank. Corinne, what's, um, apart from uh, the 60s Diva show that was on recently at the market, um, what else have you been up to? Well, what I normally do, yep. uh, work-wise, right. Uh, well, I work in theatre. Mm -hmm. I do hair and makeup uh, for theatre. I've been doing it for... 20 odd years. Yeah, thank you for doing a few of ours yeah. today too, before we came <laughs> on, so we're not looking down. shiny, that's bit of right. a powder down. Ah, uh, yeah, that's my job, that's yep. my career, I've been doing it and have travelled around the world a number of times doing the sort of Fantastic. job and work I like. Yeah, mm -hmm. alright. Wow. And um, when, uh, prior to this, when was the last time you did a show with the girls? Can you remember? I have Tell actually never done a show with any of these girls. With any of them? None of them. Right. Um, I had already stopped working when they were sort of <laughs> on their new careers, working. yeah. yeah. I'd given up. I, I'd, I'd gone on to doing, um, I'm working behind the scenes rather than in front of it. Yeah, okay. So, and that's something that you enjoy more, or do you enjoy I much sides? more. I enjoy it much more, actually, than, yeah. than performing. Well, you wouldn't know it when you were watching you on stage. Yeah, you well, like you pull your old hat tricks out of the box, that, you yeah. know, <laughs> and you these sort of things you, you don't ever forget. That's right. So yeah. what do you think the big difference in, like, the queer culture and the scene and that now, compared to when you first were doing all your shows and the changes and all that sort of stuff? Well, when we were actually working in nightclubs, and there were nightclubs, but they were also catered for proper shows. So you had uh, a nightclub with a showroom, mm -hmm. yeah. which was properly catered for. You had a stage, you had a proper stage, you had dressing rooms, dressing areas, a right and left wings, you had your pro arts, you had your chairs curtain, you had, you had chairs wow. and tables. Sit down. And that watch. was so nice. Yeah. It was like a nightclub, then after the show's over, can you can get up and, and you can get up and have a boogie or yeah. go downstairs and have a drink yeah. and still dance downstairs. Yeah. How do you Too feel close. about it today now? Like it's a lot more casual now. Well, it? it's it's a totally different thing. It's more yeah. pub, pub, they're pub shows or bar shows. Yeah. Do you, you like know, those? Do you feel well, I think they're much. I think they tend to sort of. Um, um, well, how would I put it? They tend to rely on the individual rather than as, as oh, a group. Okay. As a, a group as a performer, yeah. yeah. The yeah. individual has to be 
out yeah. there to do that. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. It, it either works or it doesn't work. Yeah. But how does in, it, sorry, go. how does it feel going out there though? And like you, you get you sort of when you come on stage, like I saw one of the shows and everyone was just like you know, amazed by you, sort of like, you know, got the cheer when you came on, and a lot of them probably don't really know your history. How does that sort of feel like you're sort of reading well, that, this all the that, that's, that's, that's the beauty of being... I know Corinne's history. <laughs> <laughs> that's Isn't the beauty it? of being in a show yeah. where it's actually... Um, the whole thing's done as a complete um, composite, like mm. it's absolutely done as a whole. Yeah. You have yeah. your opening, you have your middle production, you have your finale, you have a couple of spots. Yeah. But the whole thing works in that context where it is a 60s show and it's set up like that. Mm. So you have highlights. Oh, so okay. you have all those highlights where people do applaud you and, and they do sort of, and, yeah. you, and you're taken down and onto another number, say when Renee does her, her torch song or whatever it is. So, you know, it has that, it had light and shade. Yeah. Whereas yeah. that's what the whole show is about. Yeah. It has light and shade. We had one of the other, uh, another uh, performer on talking about drag and they quoted it as drag by numbers these days as yes, opposed to yes. um, doing shows it's all about top 40 spot numbers yes. and you know the, uh, appealing to the young crowd um, pokies is something that is emblazoned on my memory forever because mm -hmm. it was one of the only uh, well it was the first and only venue that I'd been to that was That's of right. that ilk and it was a Sunday night Everyone was, you know, getting ready to go to work the next day, yeah, but still, everyone would get dressed up. And you did. You got dressed up, and really? you went out, and, and you, got you fed. sat there. There was chicken fricassee they did, and they chicken had a lovely meal. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, I remember. Yes. But it's just, it's sad that that sort of culture doesn't exist anymore within the gay scene. And, and it was a chance for us all to talk as well, whereas we right. don't anymore, because we come out and the boof, boof, yeah, yeah. boof, and yep. you're standing next to someone, and but all they're asking you is where you, they can get your, you can get your easy C's and your D's. They're not interested in talking or anything oh, like that. Oh, really? Because, that it was. <laughs> those other places. Please, we won't go there they now. See their D's and they uh, want to go and oh, it's talking about vitamin cream. You silly <laughs> yeah. We are going oh, to the ready. news desk now. So, Jude, take it away. Okay. The first bit of news we have tonight is from uh, positive women and people living with AIDS. Uh, during the week, they released a, a little information booklet called uh, "Just Don't Take It." Uh, this is a booklet to help people deal with discrimination. Um, a lot of people who have AIDS have to deal with um, discrimination against them with the disease. Um, this booklet uh, is to help people um, work with the anti-discriminatory laws that uh, exist in, at the moment. And that was launched during the week. And for further information about, about this booklet, you can ring up Sonia Ristov on 92766918 or John Day on 0412052233. Also associated um, with AIDS, the Australian Society for HIV Medicine is later this year holding a convention. This will be at, at um, the Convention Centre in Melbourne, and that will be held in October. For, for further information, uh, you can check out the website at ASHM 2001 at icmsaust.com.au. <laughs> That's a bit of a mouthful with the um, <laughs> web page, yes. Um, now on to um, archives. Uh, on the 12th of May, Saturday, uh, Lesbian Her Story Archives from Brooklyn will be on display through Joan Nessel. She'll have a slow display and uh, giving some talks. Money from this evening goes to help the um, Australian Lesbian Archives. And that's all news for the moment. Okay, thanks there, Jude. That was excellent. Um, now. Can I just go back to Carino's yeah. show, mm -hmm. the 60s show, which was absolutely fabulous. Um, but I saw you at Capriccio's. I don't know, how many years ago was that? Because hardly anybody in that room had actually seen you do a number. Mm -hmm. We'd heard about the show. <laughs> about 20 odd years. Mm -hmm. 20 odd years ago. 20 odd years. And like you haven't changed a bit, girl, for it. 20 odd years. 20 odd years. Yeah. Um, okay, now we are going to some footage. It's our raving reporter talking to one of your fellow performers oh, of the night of the, the nice Divas, Scott. Miss Renee Scott. Um, and uh, so we're going to have a look at that footage now. Take it away, Michael. G'day, this is your roving reporter, Michael King. I'm here with the fabulous, the infamous Renee Scott of Pokies fame. 
How are you, Renee? I'm fine, thank you. Sweetie. Here at the Diva of the 60s, and of course you were a Diva of the 70s and the 80s. And don't forget the 90s. <laughs> and the <laughs> 90s too. I'm still here. Yeah. How can you look so fabulous after all these years? It's called surgery. <laughs> surgery. <laughs> How do you feel being a part of this group of um, people? I've got to say that I actually feel really elated to be working with Corinne Day. I wasn't even in drag when I saw her and like 30 years later I'm working with her so it's like I feel very privileged. Yeah. Privileged? Yeah. Oh that's fabulous. I mean the show was absolutely fantastic tonight. How does it feel to get back up on the stage again? Well the response was wonderful. It certainly was. Yeah. I mean you know like as a performer, you're very insecure, and the response, you just can't get any better. The performance could have been better, but the response... No, no, I think the feedback was fabulous tonight. It's like going back to, for all those viewers who have never been to Pokies, and of course Pokies closed, what, some years ago Nine now. Years ago. Nine, Nine years, years ago. Nine years ago now. Yeah. It was a fabulous, every Sunday night down at the Prince of Wales, and there was Renee Scott in her ball gown, and... It was just a fabulous time, Renee. <laughs> and so how do you feel going back up there now? Well, absolutely nerve-wracking. Nerve-wracking? Yeah. <laughs> well, you think you should retire gracefully, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I've got to say, look, he's one of the owners of Perry. He's Doug Lucas. The original Doug. host himself. Come over, Doug. Come on. Children are watching. <laughs> wow. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Doug Lucas, the former host of Pokies, and I know or anyone and under 30. Oh, that's right. Thanks for saying 30, that's fine. 50% over. No, well, no one under 30 will remember, unfortunately. No, no, there used to be a few underage people. There's some 26 or 27 that used to go there. Okay. It's yeah. not even close. But they don't know what they were missing out on, do oh, they? No, no, no. I've known, I've known Douglas since I was 18 and I'm 50 now. So when we were both apprentices. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not telling you my age anyway. <laughs> that's a standard joke. Renee was an apprentice carp and I was an apprentice chef. So this is Chippy and Cookie. Yeah, Chippy and Cookie. Chippy and Cookie. Yeah, that's a bit of gloss. Well, thank you, Chippy and Cookie. No, I'm Cookie. I was cookie. a chef. Chippy? She's a carpenter. Not a though. problem. Oh, those Don't old days. reincarnated. I can very well remember when you had to serve sausages, chips and peas at the Bay Marie there at Pokies on a Sunday on. night. Thank you very much, and we're back to you in the studio. Thank, thank you. you. Good night, viewers. Fantastic. That was Michael King, Renee Scott and Doug Lucas there. And yeah. how is it to have an icon like Renee Scott saying how fantastic it is to work with you? I mean, it's... It's well, phenomenal. I, I, just, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't even really relate to that sort of, you know, icon sort of thing. Mm. I think but you are, Blanche. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, we are getting the big wind up. Oh, so yeah. not for any more time, we're going to be back talking about uh, people living with HIV AIDS very shortly. So come back very soon. Bye. Yes. <laughs> TV, Channel 31, and that of course was the um, AIDS quilt, which was some footage that was taken the last time that that was um, on display here in Melbourne. And we've been joined by Peter Canavan. Please make him welcome. Thanks for coming in today. Um, mainly we've got you in today to talk about positive voices. 
Yeah, that was yeah. the conference we've just finished yeah. on Friday um, after three days. It was great. It was really, really great. Fantastic. Um, it was the f sort of first time we've had the opportunity to come together in three years. Um, so it was a real gathering of different communities, you know, and that's what's really important. Um, we're able to see ourselves as like, you know, positive women, positive heterosexual men, positive gay men, positive indigenous people, mm. all coming together, gathering to talk about what's important for them. As, in, as, as particular communities with links back to their own communities. Which is fantastic. It's and, and giving great. those people those links as well and making the connections with between people. At, at oh, it's so important, you know, to work in alliance. Definitely. You know. What Absolutely. I think is fabulous about it is it takes away the stereotype that this is a gay disease. Mm. It's like it shows that there is heterosexual men, women, lesbian Which women, I think everyone. that as far into this thing that we are, that it, it's just an amazing attitude to have that this is still a gay disease. And unfortunately, mm. it is still it does perceived by some of the... No, well, we all know that, but mm. by some of the community it is still seen as a gay man's disease. Which yeah. Is I mean, we're still the largest number of, in terms of the epidemic in Australia, mm. but it's really important that we don't forget that there are other groups that are affected by this. Definitely. Um, Definitely. And indeed, our whole community's been affected by it, oh. hasn't it? I don't think there's anyone that... Uh, and they that haven't seen the anything planet. yet, really. No. Yeah. Positive people are actually starting to get lives again, some mm -hmm. of us. That's right. Quite a few of us. And we're imposing ourselves back on our communities, from which we've taken ourselves away for some time, mm. actually. Mm. So it's really quite exciting to actually see people at this conference saying, um, yes, there's lots of real problems, lots of real issues, and we have got problems with toxicities and side effects and all that sort of stuff. But there's another side to us, and that's about our positive attitude, which says we've survived so much, we've got through so much, we have so much to offer, mm -hmm. and we want to be back in our communities. Mm -hmm. We want to be meaningfully involved. Mm -hmm. We want to have a role in society. Mm -hmm. We want to be useful people. Yeah. You know? It's like really reintegration. Mm -hmm. into well, it is. the right side. Totally. It's yeah. just yeah. relearning everything again. Yeah. yeah, you're saying it's quite hard, though, isn't it? Like you've They've well, thought for ages, you know, I'm not going to survive this, but then they mm. do. But now they do. Yeah, yeah so that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. and some oh. of us, like, have put our sex lives on hold for a long time, yeah. you know, and then, like, regaining a sense of feeling good about yourself, feeling sexy again, you know, wanting to go out and, and have sex and meet partners and, mm. and have a former relationship, thinking, you know, I'm going to live now, you know, mm. or I might, you know, I might be living for quite some time. Mm. It's a very different sort of head spin. It's mm. a different mindset. This yeah, conference yeah, that right. you had, or was it a gathering, as you say, yeah. uh, is this the first one you've had in, what, three years? Is three it? years, three yeah, years. Yeah. When will the next one, when well, do you think it might be and where? Um, not sure where, yeah, yeah. maybe Sydney, but um, don't know, can't say where, right. but certainly within two years. Right. You know, we need to keep meeting. Mm. It's so important that we come together. And if you could have been there, you would have just seen the joy and the sort of witness the diversity, but the cohesion that was there within the different communities oh, yeah. all coming together. And people weren't so much interested in like hearing the latest information because we know where to go to yeah. get that. Mm -hmm. What yeah. was important was that we actually got the chance to speak together, mm. to hear each other's stories, to, to hear what it's been it. like, and to say, okay, now what are we going to do? How are we going to move on? Mm. Let's do it. Yeah. I suppose a lot of the yeah. media sort of focus, which you know, I won't say it's like a bad thing, but it's all the towards you know to get you to learn with how to stay away from it. And they don't have as much of it as far as this is how you deal with it if you've got it, I suppose. Sort of mm, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's I mean, fair. well, we know a lot of that's about sens sensationalising it. But, you know, there's a lot of good information about how to deal with it. And there's no better way to know how to deal with it than actually having a good doctor, having the information there, but also knowing someone who's positive. Mm. You know, yeah. I think that makes and getting a big involved difference. with them. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm. So, like, I'd really put a plea in there for us to be sort of welcomed back into our communities. Yeah. And, yeah. and some of us might need a helping hand, you know, because mm. we're not... It's so scary. Yeah, it is quite scary. Mm. You think well, I mean, it? you think, yeah, totally. Uh, not just the physical, um, uh, uh, sort of financial, yep. but yeah. the emotional uh, yeah. barriers that would be there to allowing yourself, I mean, mm. to, to be back in uh, within the community again. Yeah. Um, uh, N-A-P-W-A. NAPWA. NAPWA. Stands for? National Association of People Living with HIV and AIDS. Fantastic. So there's a national group? Absolutely. Um, is there, is a, there a contact number? Thank you, Sorry. Corinne. You're reading my mind. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a contact number in Sydney, and it's 02-9281-2511, if anyone wants information on what we do around national advocacy for our people. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Or there's just someone out there that wants to get in touch and be part of the next group. Absolutely. Um, we are going to have some more footage. We're going to come back and talk to you a bit more in a minute. Uh, the next lot of footage is uh, from the last candlelight vigil and the AIDS quilt display, so we'll go and have a look at that now.
G'day, we are talking to Margaret, who uh, actually, uh, today yours was one of the new panels that new panels. was um, The Ghost of the Quilt. Yeah? Yes. And it was for? Frank Simons, my brother. Okay. Mm. I was just curious to know what this march meant for you today, uh, why you did it and why it's important maybe. Well, I think Frank was a quilt convener some years ago and um, he was also a founding member of Acceptance, which was a Catholic um, gay group about 25, 26 years ago with my mother. They had meetings at their place and Frank has had a few friends and Damien, his friend, his quilt is on there that I did a photo of and um, I think it just meant a lot to Frank to be involved in the quilt and it's just carrying on what he was so passionate about and that's the reason. Now I know you're amongst a lot of people here who um, find this a bit of a, a trying time and it had to be strong as well. Um, I know I'm someone who actually doesn't know that many people or actually know anyone who's actually passed away from HIV AIDS but it's it's pretty traumatic. And it's, it's, I think when, when somebody dies it's it's a relief because they have been through so much but I think it's it's going through what they go through and I think something like today or tonight has just brought that all back to me. Yeah. What, what's some of the best things that come out of a, an event like this for you? Like what's some of the more affirming it's things? People's awareness. It's getting all those people who don't know any gay people, who don't know anything about AIDS is just bringing it to the forefront and trying to get people aware and mm. I think young parents talking to their children. I mean we always knew my brother was gay and my children we didn't try to hide it and and I think that's the biggest thing today is just Awareness. accepting. Mm. That's what it is no matter what your sexuality or it doesn't matter. You're still a lovely person. Yeah. That's excellent and I think that's definitely the positives that come out of this yeah. and it's uh it's it's great i think you're being incredibly strong today because i know you're quite upset no, not, but um sorry. it's not all upsetting it is actually very affirming oh, as well beautiful. i mean it's just just look just look at this and look at all these people wondering it's it's just got a feeling of of calmness of of peace yeah. and i think you realize when you look at the quilt that everybody has suffered and there is they are at peace now yeah. and i think that's important as a person who's looked after somebody um, with AIDS or a terminal illness is you need to know or feel that they're at peace. Margaret, thank you very much for talking to us today and and it's it's a beautiful part of the, the new addition to the quilt too, it's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and that was uh, Travis Dijon talking to Margaret, I think her name was there, who looked like she'd um, added a piece to the quilt from mm. last year, which was wonderful. Um, now we're going to go to the news desk, so take away, Jude. Okay, um, Cherry After Dark uh, present the Black Cherry Ball. Uh, this happens on Saturday the, 29, uh, Saturday the 9th of June. For further details, you can contact June on... Five double four eight double three five six. Uh, it's also we'd like to say happy birthday to the Star Hotel. Uh, they're celebrating one year. I would have thought they've been away around for a, for a year. And also the Dome Nightclub is celebrating five years. So and we now we have a message from Women's Health Victoria. The Victorian government is um, trying to find out what um, areas of women's health need attention to. The main groups at the moment are coolies, lesbians, women in post-prison, um, working women and women with disabilities. Uh, any lesbians who are interested in taking part in consultations, they can get in contact with Deb Pesh on 961 Um Also Foundation, uh, on Sunday 22nd of April, they're having a fundraiser featuring Carmen. This will be held. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I'll just have to say further um, inquiries to nine five one zero double five six nine. Thank you. Thank you, Jude. Um, okay. Was there? Um, no. There was, I was just going to ask the same question. Um, thank you. Um, so, what was the the one thing that you saw come out of uh, out of the time together? the three days, what's the one thing that you think is really um, cool? I think the real thing is that people actually valued 
being together. That mm. was the key thing for me. It was the gathering. It was a conference, of, it was a gathering of people. And a national gathering a national as well, gathering, which, which is, is really something so that doesn't happen, um, I would say, very often. No, every three years is, you know, yeah, every two, right. three years is you yeah. know, too long, really. Okay. Mm. Would you like it to be every year? Would you like it to see I'd something like that? I'd love it if we had the funding. Think, yeah. I mean, I think that's the key thing, you know. <laughs> we need to be resourced to come yeah. together. Even exactly. though there's many of us getting well, and there's, but there's a hell of a lot of us who are having problems with toxicity and things yeah. mm -hmm. and side effects. But what we need to remember is that the government needs to continue to provide support um, because the, this issue is not over. Oh know? no. And, and although we're doing really well and many of us are having a good time doing mm. well, um, we still need to remember that. Yeah, no, and with the recent figures too, we know that this mm -hmm. issue is definitely far from over. No. Um, there is, uh, in three weeks' time, there will be a whole show um, talking about this topic on blah blah blah, which is, um, comes up after Squill, so stick around for that one. Yes. Anyone else? Anyone else? Um, um, mm, yes. Well, I was just Better, um, going off the topic. Thing? I just wanted to actually oh, yeah, um, yeah. announce some really sad news that Madonna's not coming to Australia for a concert. Oh. The Brown World Tour. Oh. But oh. there was something on one, one of her websites that Warner Australia said dates may be possible, that she may release some more. But you know why she's not coming out here? Why? Because of our Australian dollar. Oh, yeah, of course, which is tied into her right. American dollar anyway, so bugger off. Um, all right, that is it. We are out of here. Don't forget um, NAPWA, N-A-P-W-A. If you want to get in contact with them, contact us here at Bed TV, and we will pass on that phone number. Coming up next is no one, it's just us, and we're going to talk yes. a bit more. So blah, 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 blah is after that. Yes, come back. Holding you tight, there won't be no more Everywhere I I've never seen you. You look like you had a smell under your nose, and that was so funny. Welcome back to Squirrel. <laughs> hey! Thank you. And here we are. No one special, just us special. Just people, us, of course. That's right. Um, and Vic. Well, I'm that bottom actually like Michael Laffey's. Did anybody watch the mole? Yeah. Did I, I watch yes. the mole? I would like to congratulate my colleague and who works with me at 44, Brookie Marshall. Yeah. She won. She won. She was she the winner of did. the mole. God, what'd she win? $100,000, and she's now my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've always loved yes. that and, and I told her months ago when she was at that bar that she used to work at, yes. she made the best coffee, and, yes, I, and I wasn't did. damaged. But as I said, I've been watching the mole, and it only the coin only just dropped this week as to mm -hmm. where I knew her from. So oh, congratulations, wow. book. The girls and can do it. Michael, yes. what a wonderful mole, and he could ferret around anywhere <laughs> any he would yes. like. Oh. And I'm just going to say, I was glad that the how guy came away with nothing was not mole, because he just irritated me the whole show. Oh, mm. oh yeah, no, that, that one, he was No, nice. he was just irritating. Actually, he was the mole at one stage. Talking of mm. TV and rubbish. Yay! No, not rubbish. No, I won't say that. No. Start off with, um, what's their name? Scandal. Scandal. Oh, that's right. Scandal. Scandal. Ass. Um, yeah, uh, name. I would have scandaling ass. You ate Bardo scandal yeah. ass. Come and on, I mean, no, we're bad on. enough. But no. Come on, uh, just give him some. Now, support. of course, we've had this oh, week, welcome. Joy Oh Joy, mm -hmm. the starting of Kylie Minogue's yes. tour, which is has just been phenomenal and unless you just haven't been living or breathing you yes. would have seen she's also had her knickers released this week oh. who she hasn't got the knickers released who released Kylie's knickers that's what I'd like to say <laughs> so Paul. watch out Ellie McPherson a lot, of, a lot of people probably won't be watching tonight anyway because they'll be at Kylie's concert right now that's right oh my god so is we it, might as well go home is it Melbourne first one tonight is it first how fantastic tonight. so all those people that are watching us 
ha ha, you're not at Kylie. So I'm glad you're watching it. And there was um, a picture of Lucy and who was it? Jane. 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 We'll get a close up on that. We will or not. We'll just try that one. I don't know. That was a follow up from the new, from the other page. There they are. And um, before and after yeah, shots. so Kylie's knickers now. There was an article in here, and I say it every time that I see it in the paper. Dirty drug fears. Yeah. Most mm. ecstasy tablets are fake and harmful. Name me a pill that yeah. isn't. Like we didn't know that already. Look, you know, it's a placebo thing. If you take it and you think hard enough, it's going to work. That's what I That's hear. That's right. And yes. if you take it and it doesn't, well, then you're really then upset. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this man in Thailand, which I thought was really hilarious, he got pack raped by, uh, which isn't hilarious at all, but he got pack raped by five Thai women and he got $90 compo. Oh, isn't that uh, 18 bucks each? So they must have bought, yeah, $18 each. It's a lot of money. They must have bought it. It's a lot of money. It's a clean bag. It's a clean bag. 90 bucks for being but pack raped by five women. I, 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 I understand. Men, yeah, I, think. I, I don't understand. How do you actually, how does a man get pack raped? I really don't under, quite understand. Have you heard of strapped on? Yay. <laughs> oh, okay. Hello. Oh, yes. oh, oh, so, oh yeah. Oh. Vic, I think you, you might know something. <laughs> do you want to tell us? Oh, oh the yeah. black Diana statue. Did you say uh, that? No. That was no. bad. Well, one question. Why would you? I know, I don't understand Very it. Very unusual. So, uh, yeah, there you go. No one wants it. And I think it's, it's been wow. bought by, it was bought by someone. I can't remember. I didn't someone hear that. Someone kissing obviously. a shark. Now, I mean, there's a lot of things that I would do. Why? Why? I love Why? eating bugs and spiders and all the rest of it. But Are shark kissing, kissing is, sharks? I have kissed a few sharks in Not my time. Way. Yes, I have. Oh, Joni Jane Collins. I love her. Our favourite old, oh, old girl. My era, um, I love what's her. What's wrong with you? Well, no one else is talking. I'm just over right now. I'm over right now. She's got a new toy boy. Excellent. Give her a hand. Yes, there you go. Peter. Well, I just me. wanted to talk about Timi you know, Timothy McVeigh, the Oklahoma bomber, and bomber, and how everyone yeah. wants to watch him be killed. I kind of think that's a bit scary. It's where we're going. Mm. It's where we're going. I can understand why victims and from. people who lost people want to see it, but it's just scary, and I don't think it should be supported. It's no. no, I think it should I be, because I think yeah. people should be allowed to see what happens. But I think if they going to do that... But when they cause... That amount the devastation of that they did. Yeah. I but think surely this should be allowed to see that. Isn't but that you know what I think? It's a bit. No, uh, it, to the line it also so deters whoever might but be thinking of doing something. Let him kiss a shark. Are we taking it to that step further? Like, there's all this controversy about violent movies and stuff like that. Whereas, like, that's exactly. actually movies. If we're showing the real thing. Exactly, like, you know, they, it's the same I thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's just that one's supposed to be fictitious, so then the other one's yeah, not. Yeah, I think it's been hard, you know, when they're banning movies because they're violent, but we're all okay to watch someone actually be killed. I think that's a bit scary. I well, I think it's a deterrent in a way. It stops whoever you might hope be. So. Yeah, yeah, you no, hope so. No, there's too many loonies out all there. All right, oh. we're going to go and have a look at some more footage from oh. the Night of the Divas, which was uh, just recently at the Market Hotel. Yeah, Karen. And yeah. oh, this yes. is the fabulous Deborah Legay. Oh, to Michael oh, King. Deborah. Take yeah. it away, Deborah and Michael. It's your Ooh. Rotary reporter, Michael King. Hello, Squeal viewers, and we're back here at the Market, Divas of the 60s, with Deborah Legay. How are you, Deborah? I'm great, darling. And you? I'm very well, and this is the woman who's famous for the best tits in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And now 2000. Now 2000. How was the show? Oh yeah, great. I'm glad it's over, because I'm you very busy at the moment, and I've had to fit it in with my lifestyle, because I'm not a showgirl anymore. Not a showgirl anymore, but how did it feel to be back up on the stage oh, and have all those people going crazy? Yeah, fantastic. The accolades yeah. are amazing. It's something I've missed. I haven't done it for nine years, and I really had no intention of doing it now I've done it I'm glad I've done it yeah. what about the rehearsals oh it's been a bit tedious because I work a lot and I was doing the costumes as well oh really so to try and fit it all in in yep. a matter of four weeks was very difficult oh so was that short as time scale yeah, yeah. and we were rehearsing first because we're working nights and uh, we were rehearsing up to two o'clock in the morning and then going to work the next day and all that but I wanted to do it because the glamour's gone. Like, I came to Melbourne in 1970 with the original Lay Girls from yep. the Cross. Yep. And I just finished a year in Hong Kong. And, uh, yeah, when Kerry phoned me and asked me to do it, I was a bit hesitant. And then, of course, you know, once I start sitting in the sewing machine, off I go and a bit of churl, as you saw. <laughs> 
It so, makes a girl feel like a woman. But it, uh, it does. It yeah. feels like the old days again. Back in yeah, the yeah, yeah. And, and it's it's good to let the young the young girls and boys and whatever see exactly how extravagant it was because it's so different now. Most of the girls around are not transsexual ladies. That's right. Not that that's anything against them, but they don't have the extravagance. They don't have the budget. They don't have the knowledge. You know. And, um, well, certainly those um, pokey days um, were big budget productions. Oh yes. And it, you must have felt fabulous coming out in those costumes. So I understand why it sort of died a bit in a way. Yeah. Well, at Pokies, the last few shows that I made costumes with with Monica, we were spending forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand dollars. Yeah. On costumes. I think we spent about four thousand dollars here but at least it gives you a twinkle of what's actually happening and you know it's a bit of a well, trip down memory lane for everyone. Well a trip down memory lane exactly yeah. and for everyone who can't remember those days and you'd probably have to be under 30 um, not to yeah, remember come those on, days. Do me, have me, do me. <laughs> <laughs> they were big production days back then and it has all changed hasn't yeah, it? Yeah totally. Well the money's not there I mean clubbing's different people don't drink like they used used to, it's all a different... There are a lot scenario. more clubs now, aren't there, compared to what there was, like Mandate and Pokies and... Oh, yeah. Oh, that was about it, really. How lucky am I to be my age? 35? Yeah, plus. <laughs> no, I'm actually 52, and I couldn't be more pleased that I've lived through the era that I have, and seen it all, and lived it all, and, um, yeah, and still reminiscing, still going. and people enjoying it. Like, when I did my spot number, it just gave me a tingle down my spine oh, and I haven't had that for a long time. You look fabulous Debbie and thank you very much for coming on Squeal Good this pleasure. afternoon. Thanks very much Fizz, we'll see you back in the studio. See ya. Fantastic and that was Michael King talking to the other diva icon Deborah Legay. Um, and Good on you, Deborah, for telling everyone your name, your age. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's Yay, really being cool. Old rocks. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. We're loving us. Yes. All right, we're going for the final instalment from rocks. Jude at the <laughs> Lesbiana News Desk. Take it away, Jude. Okay, making making our love legal. The lowdown on the state of the relationships bills. Uh, join the Victorian Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby for a night at, on Tuesday, the 24th of April at Bar 44, 44 Yay. Lonsdale Street, Melbourne. <laughs> Now, next we have uh, a dance uh, performance, Waking Grief. This happens on May the 12th and 13th at uh, Dance House, 150 Princess Street, Carlton. To uh, find out more information about this event, you can contact Rita Luresi on 94800581. Also, um, we have an opportunity to uh, register for Sydney Gay Games and that happens at um, Spargo Sidewalk Cafe on uh, Friday 27th of April. Uh, and if you've got any new news bits that you'd like to be read on Bent TV, you can phone Bent on 94194745, fax 94194753 or write to Post Office Box 1414 Collingwood 3066 or you can use the email all the website details which are appearing on the screen now. And that's back to you. Oh, high tech. Fantastic uh, uh, direction up there, I think. There was yeah. fabulous Sally Goldner and Travis McFarlane. Um, okay, Peter. I um, just want to mention the Channel 31 subscriber-thon that's on from the 10th to the 27th of May. Support Channel 31. We need the money. Otherwise, without money, we can't do this show. We can't entertain you. Um, so feed the fish and get in, get that money in, 10th to 27th Where of May. Where do they send it to? They send it to Channel 31. I, I can't think of the number right at this moment, but we will get it to you before the 10th of May. But just keep it in your right, mind. Yeah. Okay, remember. Subscriber-thon, that's right, because yes. we need you to help us. All right. Yeah. Next week is Squirrel's third birthday. Oh my god. Uh, Yay! So we're going to have a bit of a party next week so make sure you stay tuned for that. Tonight at 10.30 is the last in this series of Bitch and Kitchen and we're cooking cheesecake with Caress which was yeah. a lot of fun. Oh, so brilliant. make sure you get your pens and your paper out for that one. Yes. Um, thank you uh, Corinne for coming thank in you. today. Yes. It was fantastic. Thank you. And Vic, thank, thank, thank you darling. And I'd like to wish John Wayne a happy birthday. Happy birthday John. At the John. market on Sunday, Sunday 40. Absolutely. Unreal John Wayne. Yes. Everyone yes. from us. Thank you again. Pleasure as always. Sorry about Madonna. Yes. Peter, 
Sad, isn't it? It is very sad. On your Grunya. Showgirls Jude, roll. Jude, Jude the dude. Jude. Get on you, Jude. Thank you very much. Now, I just wanted to say to everyone, we've spoken about some serious issues today. Um, please, everyone, let's really think about what we're doing out there. And um, uh, the simple one is, if it's not on, it's not on. And yeah. it's just really that simple. So, oh, okay. please, everyone, stay safe, stay tuned for more Bent TV, and uh, we'll see you next week here on Squirrel, which is uh, Bent TV, Channel 31. And as you know, it's your community station. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week. This program is proudly sponsored by DT's Hotel, where every colour of the rainbow drinks, corner of Hyatt and Church Streets, Richmond.